In Revelation 8 to 9, John describes a time near the end of the world when angels sound seven trumpets. Each trumpet heralds the arrival of a new round of judgment on the people of the earth. The seven trumpets are described in Revelation chapters 8 and 9, as well as in Revelation 11 verses 15 through 19. The trumpets represent disasters. The seven trumpets are the contents of the seventh seal judgment. Revelation 8 verses 1 to 5. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. The judgments heralded by the seven trumpets will occur during the tribulation period at the end of the world. Seven angels who stand in God's presence are given seven trumpets, which will be used to unleash another round of judgments. The first trumpet. When the first angel blows his trumpet, the entire world is engulfed in hail and fire mixed with blood. Revelation 8 verse 7. This plague destroys one-third of the world's trees and consumes all grass. This judgment bears some resemblance to Egypt's seventh plague. Exodus 9, verses 23 to 24. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail, and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The Second Trumpet Revelation 8 verses 8 and 9 The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. In heaven, a second angel sounds a trumpet. The result is that something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turns into blood, a third of the ships sink, and a third of the ocean dies. Verse 9. This judgment is similar in some ways to the first plague in Egypt. See Exodus 7, verses 20 to 21. The third trumpet. Revelation 8, verses 10 and 11. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The third trumpet judgment is like the second, except it affects the world's freshwater lakes and rivers instead of the oceans. Specifically, a great star, blazing like a torch, falls from the sky and poisons a third of the water supply. Revelation 8 verse 10. Wormwood is the name given to this star, and many people die as a result. Verse 11. Wormwood, Artemisia absinthium, is a shrub-like plant known for its extreme bitterness and poisonous properties in botany. The Fourth Trumpet. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the trumpet blast about, to be sounded by the other three angels. Revelation 8 verses 12 to 13. The fourth of the seven trumpets bring about changes in the heavens. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. Revelation 8 verse 12. 
Following the fourth trumpet judgment, John observes a special warning given by an eagle flying through the air. This eagle cries out in a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. Revelation 8 verse 13. For this reason, the fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpets are referred to as three woes. The fifth trumpet. Revelation 9 verses 1 to 5. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like woman's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers, like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as kings over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon and in Greek is Apollyon, that is, destroyer. The first woe is past. Two other woes are yet to come. Causes a terrifying plague of demonic locusts to attack and torture the unbelievers for five months. Revelation 9, verses 1 to 11. The plague begins with the fall of a star from heaven. As he is given the key to the shaft of the abyss, this star is most likely a fallen angel. He opens the abyss, releasing a horde of locusts with power like that of scorpions. The locusts do not touch the plant life of earth. Rather, they head straight for those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Verse 4. These locusts torment people for five months, causing such agony that they will wish to die, but death will elude them. The locusts are only permitted to torture people not kill them. The angel of the abyss serves as the king of these demonic locusts, Revelation 9 verse 11. In Hebrew, he is known as Abaddon, and in Greek, he is known as Apollyon, which means destroyer. The locusts themselves are described in unusual terms. They resemble battle-ready horses. They are dressed in something resembling crowns of gold, and their faces are vaguely human. They have hair that looks like woman's hair and teeth that look like lion's teeth. Their wings sound like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle, and they wear iron breastplates. They have stings in their tails, just like scorpions. The name Abaddon means place of destruction. In Hebrew, and Apollyon literally means the destroyer in Greek. When the fifth angel blows his trumpet, the abyss, a great smoking pit, will open, and a horde of demonic locusts will rise out of it. Revelation 9, verses 1 to 3. These beings will be given the authority to torture anyone who does not bear God's seal. The pain they cause will be so excruciating that sufferers will wish to die. Abaddon, Apollyon, is the abyss's ruler and the king of these demonic locusts. Abaddon Apollyon is likely one of Satan's underlings, a destroying demon, and one of the rulers, authorities, and powers mentioned in Ephesians 6, verse 12. The Sixth Trumpet Revelation 9, verses 13 to 21 The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, 
and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. Their heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. The sixth trumpet and the second woe heralds the arrival of yet another demonic horde. When the sixth trumpet blows, a voice from God's altar requests the release of the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. These four angels had been locked up for one reason only, to wreak havoc during the tribulation. These four evil angels command a supernatural cavalry of thousands upon thousands to slaughter one-third of humanity. Their riders wear fiery red, dark blue, and yellow breastplates. Their horses have lion's heads, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur, and their tails are like snakes. They use their mouths and their tails to kill. Despite the severity and horror of these plagues, the survivors on earth still refuse to repent. They continue in their idolatry, their murder, their sorcery, their sexual immorality, and their theft. Revelation 9, verses 20 to 21. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Following the sixth trumpet judgment is a literary interlude. John observes an angel descend from heaven with a little scroll in his hand. A promise is given that the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, Revelation 10, verse 7, and John is told that he must prophesy some more, verse 11. Following that is a description of the two witnesses who will preach and perform miracles in Jerusalem before being slayed. God will raise them back to life and take them to heaven, Revelation 11, verses 1 to 13. The seventh trumpet. The seventh trumpet and the third woe sounds and there are loud voices in heaven proclaiming, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Revelation 11, verse 15. The 24 elders say, The time has come for destroying those who destroy the earth. Obviously, God is about to wrap things up once and for all. At the sound of the seventh trumpet, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, pearls of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. Verse 19. The seven trumpet judgments have come to an end. All is set for the seven angels with the seven bowls of God's wrath. These angels stand inside the now open temple ready to step forward and bring the final judgments on the earth. Revelation 15.